Do you have to keep track of multiple access databases? It was probably pretty easy when you just had one or two. Then you had three or four, and over time they seemed to multiply like rabbits, and before you knew it you had an impossible task. An administrative database can help you keep track of them. Hey everybody, this is Ray Harvey with Access Jitsu. Thanks for joining us for our video on Access Administrative Databases. This is going to be part one of a multi-part series as we build out an administrative database piece by piece. In today's video, we're going to take a look at using the built-in functionality that Microsoft provides with the Jet User Roster. and We're going to use that to count the people that are logged into the databases that you want to monitor. So let's have an overview of what we're going to do. The situation we have here is we have multiple databases somewhere in your organization, hopefully in a shared location that you can get to on a network drive that you want to monitor and you want to see how many people are logged in to which database. So we're going to build an administrative database, an access database that's going to look at each one of these databases in turn and count how many people are logged into each one and then display it to us on a form in our administrative database. So in our admin database, we're going to have a table called monitor DBs and that's going to keep track of which databases we want to monitor and their locations. Okay, We have to know where they are. And we're going to build a form to help us load that data into this table. Then we're going to have the actual admin form itself. That form is going to run code that's going to interrogate the JET user roster for each of these databases. It's going to insert it into a, another table called users logged in and then we're going to have a form that's going to display the contents of this table for us. And we're going to set a timer on this form to run this, this query every so often. I think uh, for the demonstration to have it set to run every 10 seconds. Now there is a caveat that I'd like to mention about the Jet User Roster and whether or not it's a shortcoming or not is going to really depend on what you're looking for and what you consider a login. So the Jet User Roster will show you when somebody has a database file opened. But that means something different when you have a combined database versus you have a split database with a front end and a back end. In a combined database, if somebody has opened a combined database, you know they're in there, so to speak. And the entire time they have that file open, they will show up in the Jet User Roster as having that database open, even if they're not doing anything. However, for a split database, Okay, your, your front end might be on each of these users' PCs. It's going to be very difficult for you to monitor each of these PCs because you have to get access to their drives across the network. You'd rather monitor the back end that they're logging into. But what you get when you monitor the back end is you only see when they've actually connected to the back end. So it depends on what your users are doing in their front ends as to whether or not they actually show up as logged into the back end. So when you will see them log into the back end is when they have a form opened that is actually or has a table in the back end open. So what you'll see over time, they might have their database open all day long, but what you'll see over time is they'll be in and out of this back end. It's just going to depend on what activity they're doing in their front end. So whether that's a pro or a con, I don't know. It depends on the type of information you're looking for. Personally, for me, I want to know when they logged in in the morning and when they logged out. So I don't like this a whole lot. But if you're looking at when are they actually hitting tables, then that's the perfect information for you. So let's take a quick look at the database we're going to be working with. Here is the monitored, ta monitored databases table. Very simple. I have an auto number for a primary key. I'm calling DBID. I've got the name that I want to display in the form that we're going to, that's the name that you want to use when you're referring to the database. It's going to show up in your table. It's going to show up in your form. Where, as the identifier for your, your database. Here's the path to the database file you want to monitor. And then I've got an active, uh, a true false field here. I'm calling active, and that's just are we currently monitoring this database or are we going to stop or are we not going to monitor it? We're not going to monitor databases that have a false in this column. And the data in there looks something like this. Okay, so I've given each database a unique name. Each database, of course, has a unique primary key. And there's the path to each database we're going to monitor. So let's look at the form we're going to use for entering the data into that table. I've got a nested form here. I've got a parent form, and then I've got a subform that actually does the, 
the interrogation on the monitor databases table. I like to give instructions whenever possible. I really dislike having forms where you expect your users to remember or you expect new users to just figure it out. So down here in our our sub form I've got it set as a continuous form. Okay, so you're going to have a row down here for each database you want to monitor and at the bottom you'll have an empty row. You can enter a new one. But again, we got that display name. Here's the active, true, false. There's the path. And we have a button here. So let's take a look at the code behind this button, this browse button. The browse button is how we're going to find the path to our database. So let's take a look real quick. When we click that command browse button, we're going to call a function that's going to open the office file dialog. Open file dialog. Here we are, get file folder. We give it a type we want, a file or a folder, and we give it a title, what we want to display in the box. Again, I have uh, I have used this function in multiple videos. If you want a more in-depth explanation on how to use the uh, open file dialog, I've got other videos that look into that in detail, and I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. But after we come back from this call, we have the file name that the users chose and it goes into text db path which is that guy right there so let's open this guy and there we go we have an entry for each database in that table so this form is like configuration if you will we're setting up which databases we're going to monitor okay so let's take a look at the form now that's going to be monitoring our other databases that is this guy form.admin open design view it's actually also a nested form you can see we've got a parent form on the outside here and a subform in the middle. And the way this guy works is this subform, let's pull the proper sheet, this subform queries, it, it, its data source is a query, and this query queries this table, users logged in. Okay. The outer form, format admin, on form.load and on a form.timer, it queries this database, this table, to figure out which databases we're going to monitor, and then it queries each of those databases one at a time, and inserts the users that are logged into each one into this table. So the outer form populates this table, and the inner form queries the table. The subform I have set up as a data sheet. We have three fields on there, three columns, and actually we don't need this DBID. For this video however in the next video we're going to be using that as a key in a query so we're going to put that there and leave it there for now but this is the database name that we're displaying this is a user account let's take a look at this form in operation so we can make sure we understand what we're trying to accomplish here with our code all right so we have three databases that were listed in our monitor databases table and we have one person logged in to folder search dash combined and nobody logged into these others so I want to try to demonstrate the difference of the results you get from Jet User Roster when you have a split database versus, versus a combined database. Okay, I've got a laptop here. Now, good luck seeing this on a phone or an iPad mini. But I want to show you that right now, this guy is logged into the two databases. I've got the folder search here on top, and then behind it, this is the, uh, the split existing database. Notice in a user interface over here, we're only registering a user for the split folder combined. We don't have anything for split existing yet, even though I have the front end opened on this laptop. And that's because, again, like I said a minute ago, you if, if your front end is not actually interrogating a table, you don't show up in the Jet User roster for that back end. So I'm going to click on a table over here and open up the table, and then we can see our user interface over here has changed. Now we're showing a count of one user on split existing as well. So let's head over to our code. Here's the code for the parent form outer forms. Take a look at the, the sub form very quickly. On the sub form, I've got one tiny bit of code. This guy right here is the primary key. We don't need to see him in the user interface. We're going to need him in video two. We're going to use it as a key uh, for a join. But for right now, we don't need it. And we don't need to see it, definitely. There's one bit of code here on form.load. Control name dot column hidden equals true. We'll hide that from the user interface. Here's our parent form. I have two 
form level events okay form.load and form.timer in both cases they call load jet users load jet users is the code that actually populates our users logged in table okay so let's take a look here first thing I do is populate a variable named machine name and that is over here in mod, mod public functions we're using an API API get computer name it's in the kernel 32 uh, that DLL and it gets the name of the machine and I'll, we'll talk about why I'm doing that in just a minute but here's a function that calls that API I don't want to go into it in any depth but just suffice it to say it returns a long uh, it populates a string and you give it the length of the string you want it to populate and we're just this is a function return to string so uh, we're calling it and then I'm returning the results of that call and get machine name if we get an error we we'll go to the else here and we just return a null string so machine name tells us what machine I'm currently running on and we'll use that in just a minute next I want to clear out this users logged in table okay so here's a delete query delete star from users logged in and then current DB execute SQL next I want to get a list of the databases that we want to interrogate and those are stored in monitored databases so we're going to select all these columns including the path that's the most important one probably for monitor databases where active equals true we had a column in that table where we could turn on and off monitoring for a database that's this column if we had false here that would say that we did not want to monitor that database at this time okay so we put the results of that query into rs2 which is a dao record set next we're going to establish an adodb connection to the databases that we want to monitor this schema that microsoft gives us to, to use and get results from the jet user roster is uh, or requires an ADODB connection. So I have defined up here, ooh, there we go, con as a new ADODB connection. So we don't have to instantiate it down here. It's already instantiated as soon as this method starts to run. We're going to load a provider to it, con.provider equals Microsoft Ace OLADB 12.0. Now, if you are using um, are, are hitting databases that are older than version 2007 you're going to use need to use this provider that I have commented 2007 later use this provider so that's that's another twist if you've got older databases you're going to need to probably note that in the table that stores your database list and say whether it's older or newer so that you know which one of these to use now, all of mine are older than 2007 so I'm not bothering next we're going to set up a loop and we're going to run through each of the databases that we want to monitor and then we're going to interrogate each one one at a time so I've got a loop here a do while loop do while that record set does not end a file and I've got the terminator way down here all right as you can see there's a lot more comments here than there is actual code so anyhow the first thing I want to check is do I actually have a valid path in that monitor databases table if I don't have a path then I can't open the database to interrogate it so if we don't have a path we're going to go to next db which is right above the end of our loop here's the label the very next thing would be to move to the next record in that monitor databases record set and then loop okay so then we do have a valid path we're going to open a connection so connection dot open using the path that we just obtained from our record set now if you've got a password on your databases you're going to need to use this format of the command right here I've got that commented out for you next we're going to actually interrogate the schema that Microsoft provides to get information on the users in each database now this is coming right off of Microsoft's website we're setting a record set equal to the connection which established open schema and then all this good stuff just coming right out of Microsoft's website it's the same for every access database just copy it right in there this will populate this record set with these four columns okay computer names obvious of course is going to be the name of the computer login name uh, was more useful when we had user level security built into access uh, in the versions prior to 2007 uh, in versions after 2007 what you get here usually is the word admin so not terribly useful anymore connected as a boolean tells us uh, true or false whether the person is connected or not and suspect state lets us know uh, whether there was something wrong with the connection 
uh, perhaps um, uh, if access didn't shut down properly on their machine you'll you'll get a value here in suspect state so now we have a record set that has one row per user in the database that we're looking at and we want to take those rows and load them into this users logged in table so we have a do while loop for that right here looping through RS which is this record set and here's where I use the machine name and here's where you have to make a decision we have to open a connection to the database in order to interrogate the users in there so the interrogating machine will always have an entry in this record set so you decide do you want to see yourself as a user reach these databases that you're interrogating or do you re are you really just interested in the other people that are logged in I've decided that I don't want to show myself in the user account so that's what I'm doing here with this if if the machine name that we just loaded for this machine is not equal to the first column in this record set which is computer name if they're not equal then we want to move in here to our insert statement so we are pulling column values from two different record sets okay these two columns are coming from the monitored databases table there's a unique ID primary key here this is the name we want to display in our form the name that we're using to identify the database and these other columns are coming from the jet user roster after we're finished looping through this record set we close the record set and we close the connection we move to the next record in our monitor databases record set and start over again and target its path open a connection etc after we've done all that we're going to tell our subform to requery itself okay so what we've done we have we have reloaded this users logged in table and now we want to tell our subform to requery itself and pull fresh data from that table and of course we've got some cleanup code down here at the bottom set our connection to nothing and are setting our two record sets to nothing Okay, so that's it for this video. In this video, we're just showing counts of users logged into each database. In the next video, we're going to add a section to that form that allows you to click on a database and see the details of who's logged into each database. As usual, I have the complete code listing on my blog, and I have a link to that in the description below the video. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of this, and please don't forget to subscribe.